now it's gonna be roughly for like all the events it's like 60 70k just for bro, food, just for food. Like, you, and yo, for like the reception hall half like the food's gonna go in the garbage <laughs> bro people are gonna put their napkins on top of it six and the 60. reception hall obviously included in it just but still 60, 60, which reception hall uh it's mirage oh mirage oh it's off 50th street <laughs> yeah it's a nice hall though yeah it's a nice nice hall there's a lot of parking too, so I'm like, That's just good. for a hall and food, it's <laughs> 60, 70 k Dude, it's crazy. And like, and there's decor. It's crazy. And, and when you're crazy. getting married, you don't have time to actually eat. Bro, yeah. we didn't eat shit at our wedding. We had McDonald's after. Only people like eating <laughs> the people that come there, the guests. And yeah, the ones that talk, oh, the food and was planned. The food yeah. was cold. They yeah. came out late. <laughs> but fuck you. Be <laughs> they only had 12 options. I didn't eat for the whole day. <laughs> Bro, so like me and my wife are just staring at like her sister. She's like stressed. I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad we did this back in 2017 when it wasn't as bad. Sheesh. Like it was still an arm and a leg. Don't get me wrong, but like stupid how expensive. You know what's so crazy? My cousin in Cali, she's like, she's got married like a year and a half ago. Yeah. She's like, Amit, the average cost here doesn't go below 150. That's USD. 150. That's like 200. 150. Oh. USD. <laughs> and thing is, half the time it's for our parents, man. Because exactly. say, oh, like this auntie, uncle invited you guys to our wedding, to, to, to their kids' wedding 30 years ago. We have to invite them. Or yeah, they yeah, came yeah. to your birthday when you were 12. You know who they are. It's like, no, bro. Like, yeah. In the US, they lack like um, like the reception halls and stuff. The like, big shortage of it. Oh, it's, really? it's great to get married in Toronto. They have. Really? Wedding halls every freaking yeah. city block. So it's probably quite competitive. Probably it's like very. That. That's why the pricing there. Because my sister got married in Toronto. Yeah. So much cheaper. So much cheaper. Shit. Interesting. But that's again. That's back in 2015. So. Welcome back. Angles, you know, don't worry. Don't worry, uncles. Um, yeah, yeah, don't be canceled. Be uh, welcome back. You just take two. Just take two. <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> With our boy Rama Studio, as he's known as on the Instagram and the in his works. Um, so you know, everybody give a round of applause. We'll throw a round of applause in there. <laughs> and he's a true performer. You know, going oh through this God. podcast while he's you know fasting as well. Yeah. People that don't know, you know, it's Ramadan season. So man. Uh, appreciate you again Thank you. coming out. With I appreciate it. I got the beard lined up this you got time. The beard lined up. I got, <laughs> you won't see what it looked like before. It's all good. This guy came. Slippers. This guy came with the glasses. Like, okay, he's prepared. This I, time. I, I, I got it. Lock and load, ready to go. But yeah, man. I just give us a quick intro to the audience, man. If they yeah. all don't know, homegrown product of you know Edmonton, yeah, up and coming, you know. Yeah, so I'd say the very least, I'm a professional artist and visual designer. I specialize in creating large scale paintings, murals. I do a lot of graphic design and illustration work, marketing, branding. Uh, I've been very lucky to work with some of the biggest names in the sports and entertainment industry, as these guys already know from yeah. last time, but <laughs> that didn't happen, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm no, excited to kind of talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, today we'll kind of. You know, we have different subjects. I mean, as we reflect on a previous one, there's yes. topics that come in your head as yeah, well. Of course. So, yeah. you know, we kind of improve on, you know. But one of the things that we kind of, you know, discuss that in our community, we don't have enough knowledge of is how art can be a form of, you know, almost like a business or of a, you know, stream of income that you can provide. Of course. For mm, yeah. But obviously, it's a, it's a long process, as we know. You've been doing this at it for 2014 15, 15 even longer than longer. that when it comes yeah. to you drawing yeah you being passionate about this but when you realize oh i can do something with this that was process started in 2014 mm -hmm. and fast forward i mean 2015 step fast forward almost 10 years 10 yeah years, almost 10, 10 years, years man 10 years in the making crazy of, you know that at this point you, you just sit back be like okay i accomplished not now like what's next yeah. yeah you can't just stop be like yeah, no you good. can't you can't uh, stop because like again it's like as it's kind of corny to say but it's like it's not about the so it's not about the end destination it's about the journey the right journey, so if you yeah. if you just stop in the journey it's like you don't know what you're kind of missing out on yeah and my barber today was asking because he, he found it like he kind of crapped me on instagram he's like oh you do this you do these paintings for all these people i'm like yeah he's like how'd you start i'm like bro you just, you just got kind of started just like how you started cutting yeah. hair yeah. get better each day get better each year and just kind of keep pushing yourself to to get to where you want to be right and, exactly. and i was telling him like, it's already been almost like eight nine years since i took this seriously and it's been i haven't looked back i know and, and that's the one thing that i feel like we lack in our community is just understanding of no matter what form of business you're doing whether it's art whether it's you know podcast whether it's you know entrepreneur real estate whatever it is yeah. at the mm -hmm. end of the day so um, it's what you put forth you know and i and sometimes i feel like our parents don't understand art 
in a sense where like how can it attract business or how can it provide you a stream of income right. you know yeah. and that's a lot of the kids that i know out there that do enjoy doing it and i know a lot of my cousins that are talented that do that have passion you know about it but thing is like from the parents level they're like oh that's cool that's so nice that's so, the whole the level. Nice, it's a nice it. hobby that's that's it, it, right? yeah but thing is now we now we understand that kid has a talent now we gotta take the initiative be like this person my kid has a talent mm-hmm. how do i get him in be like hey do you want to get enrolled in some art classes or do you yeah, want to go yeah. somewhere there is there isn't that second talk because we don't view it as like a streamlined business that you can have for yourself you know yeah i think the biggest thing back when i was starting out because like my, i guess i was lucky because like i had parents that very much supported this from day one like my mom yeah. taught me how to paint when i was like five six years old mm-hmm. i got the business side from my dad like he owned apart from his career as a geologist he owned like a meat store he owned a donair shop yeah. shout out queen donair right <laughs> missed those <laughs> days man yep. 2010 2012 yep. <laughs> but like they, they pretty much said that whatever you want to be like what they just want to you want to become a doctor lawyer engineer artist designer whatever just put your full effort into it right exactly and like i'm very lucky and fortunate to have had a very supportive family system as you probably already know as yeah. well where it's like whether i want to try painting or mural or like kind of reach out to an event or like a sponsor or whatever mm. they were like just do it put your effort into it. if it doesn't work if one door closes another one will open up just keep trying you can't give up right yeah. exactly. so i think same thing apl- applies for any kind of academic career where it's like you're gonna have moments where you fail where you may make a mistake but say like, how do you bounce back so i think exactly. same thing with yeah. art same thing with business same thing with any kind of passion hobby that you want to you know turn to something else yeah I feel like now nowadays kids have it a bit better where it's like we have the power of social media even more right. mm-hmm. than like 10 years ago where it's like you can become not an overnight sensation but you yeah. can it can expedite the process right exactly. so that's why i will say like my, my biggest tool is social media instagram TikTok, just yep. reaching out to these clients tagging them and then just kind of taking it from there yeah and then one thing you kind of pointed out is like tagging them comments thing 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 is now as you said we have it a little bit easier in regards to the entry of barrier. Back in the day, our parents won't be full going in understanding that this is something they can fully commit to and make something out of it. Because yeah. as you said, like not everybody has a supportive, you know, cast around them, you know? Yeah. And so now with as you said, is we have it easier in a sense where we can showcase our parents, be like, hey, look, look at this is like Roman. He's grew up here. He started mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. Look where he's now. Look at yeah. the things he's doing now. Right. Yeah. So it allows them to show up different um you know a narrative when it comes from this is something that's achievable yeah and i think the biggest thing that we, we can't really fault our parents too much either because exactly. they came here with whatever is on their back and mm-hmm. like they obviously wanted it wanted to take the safe route like i i guarantee a lot of our parents probably said no to a lot of their dreams yeah because mm-hmm. it wasn't immediately paying the bills yeah. right so at least with us we grew up as first generation immigrants we had that supporting of our parents we had if we if we effed up we, they they still had us right they still got our exactly, back yeah. so i think with our parents like they kind of based it off of what they knew and what they kind of grew up with exactly, so yeah. if you were doing what i did back in like the 1960s you had balls well, yeah, oh, especially yeah. if you were like first time coming to canada <laughs> and you're like yeah i'm just gonna be a painter, painter or, like a designer yeah. for my family <laughs> and i'm supporting my 20 siblings back home do you know how many ass whooping you will get from oh dude Bro, you would... like did i say that the mask <laughs> or something you still get that nowadays but like it's, it's last like, okay just try it out now yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Just yeah, try it out. And, and that's the thing though too i feel like a lot of people nowadays where we, instead of reflecting a light on ourselves yeah. and understanding where our flaws are yeah. and understanding sometimes we i think for like now people tend to get more lazy with their ambitions and their dreams oh, yeah. compared to back then yeah. back in the days and our one outlet to kind of you know mitigate be like why you're not doing things what you should be is what our parents man they mm. don't support us they don't do this they're not there for us okay if they're not what are the talks are you having yeah. what are you showcasing for them yeah. to be like okay this is something that's legitimate that you can succeed in because yeah. if you're showing some sort of accomplishment or showing some sort of improvement but like look mom this guy bought my painting for 20 dollars. it doesn't matter yeah because at the end of the day it's not the monetary value behind it it's what you are building up, building up. Yeah. your pain's not going to deny well, the it's... fact that like it's nothing yeah, right? it's, it's your responsibility right? exactly. at the end of the day like a, a lot of people don't really want to take accountability because you're just making assumptions that this is how your parents are going to think which 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 is reasonable yeah. in a sense because they, they come like what we were talking about it's like yeah. they come back from home right they, they come from a survival they come mentality. from survival yeah, yeah. right and then right? we just make this stuff in our head like okay you know they're not gonna accept it which which in some cases it is you know agreeable like, yeah it, it makes sense like okay they're not accepted but what I would say, take a step further. Do I mean, even though your parents don't accept it, that is not going to stop you from still doing the work. Yeah. Exactly. Do the work, practice on it, and eventually, slowly let lead them into showing you, uh, showing them what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Or even like showing like 
you know, throw, throw on Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff like I'm pretty sure Ramon has, you know, kids that follow him and he, he's a, you know, he's an example for those kids, right? So those kids can show them like, hey, this is what he's doing. This is kind of the passion I want to pursue. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I, I think with the point that that we made here, I think it's breaking it down with two different segments. One is our parents' understanding and one from our kids' perspective that we are living today's generation. Yeah. So I think it's important to understand that like parents have to be involved, especially nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Given how powerful social media is and how kids, you know, have access to everything at the tip of their fingers. Mm -hmm. I feel like parents need to do a job of understanding you know, there's a lot of shit out there that's not healthy for the kids. Mm -hmm. And when you stray away from the responsibility of like, okay, I gotta be present in my kid's life, given, you know, where we are today, I think that allows the kids to kind of stray away and go down the path where, going on bad paths. And what's the one thing in a South Asian community that we see a lot that's happening that kids go towards mm -hmm. is what violence, like violence, drugs, yeah. this, that. Look no. at BC, man. It is bad it's out been brutal. Edmonton nowadays, man. Even it's Edmonton, getting pretty bad. It's, moving it's, to it's Edmonton, terrible. Right? And it's then, crazy. And I feel like it, it goes hand in hand. I feel like parents got to be more understanding of the kids. Like, take them to a smaller vacation. Dude, Drive it's, a, somewhere. It's, it's a team effort. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right? Just like how, because like, I have two little girls. So like I, as a parent, they, they look up to me like as if I have all the answers, but I don't. Yeah. So as parents, you're also learning with your kids. So Boy. it's our job to kind of reverse the roles where it's like, now I'm kind of old enough to show you that, hey, what I'm doing is legit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might not understand it fully, but let oh, me yeah. educate you. Not, not mm -hmm. just educate you in that condescending way, but let me just, let me just help you understand. Let me help yeah. you understand it, right? Yeah. And then once they understand it, like, even if they're not fully supportive, but like if it's what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. they're still your parents. They're exactly. still going to love yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, but I, I think like even too, like <clears throat> considering that we're all first generation immigrants, right? There are things that, you know, what we're talking about is about parents, right? So there are some things that our parents didn't understand about emotional, having that connection, you know, talk about emotions and all that sort. You know, we, we take into consideration as we go, as we grew up, we're like, okay, I want to make sure that when I have my own children, <laughs> I want to make sure that they don't have to deal with the stuff that mm -hmm. I had to go through mm -hmm. with my parents, right? Yeah. So I'm curious to know, like, from your aspect, like, I mean, you don't need to go too much deal. No, it's quite no, personal. My aunt, my uncle. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. But like, I'm curious to know, like, what are some things that you kind of kept in mind as you grew up? Yeah. And keeping aware of like what you want to teach your kids. I mean, it's I guess, I guess uh, that undivided support would say whatever you want to do, whether you want to be an artist, you want to try out science, you want to try out math, you want to yeah. be an accountant, just talk to me. We'll figure it out yeah. if you want to give it a shot if you want to try something new we'll try something new yeah. then my daughter is my my eldest she's four now um she she hated soccer last year <laughs> we put into swimming in, yeah. in summer she loves it so yeah. she swims better than i have ever swam in my life <laughs> and i'm like it's, it's about like kind of exposing them to different things not forcing one thing on top of the other but it's like if you want to try soccer, try soccer. If you want to try swimming, try swimming. If you want to try art, whatever. It's like whatever you latch on to, yeah. even if it's completely different than what I'm doing, I don't care. Like if, the, if that's what you like, if that's your thing, then go for it. Like even now, like if, if, if they're making a mess with paints in the house, I'm like, I'm just going to let them do it. Like the paint will be cleaned. I can clean it off the floors, off the mm -hmm. walls. Yeah. But you can't hinder that creative moment where it's like they're learning how to hold a paintbrush what shapes work well together what colors go yeah. good with, with each other even if, even if it looks like a brown mess that's mm. their that's their process right exactly. it's their process, yeah. so again it doesn't have to be art doesn't have to be design anything right so my big thing that i'll take away from my parents is yeah just having that having your back as as no the way. parent right because yeah. mm. now because even growing up i saw a lot of people that i know like whether it's relatives or friends were like they would hide from their parents mm. they would tell everything to, to their friends which is yeah. great have close friends but I feel like once your parents are like your homies too, yeah. anything you want to deal with, whether it's like career-wise, school-wise, drinking, girls, yeah. boys, yeah. you go to them first and they'll have they'll have better advice than any of your friends, 100%, right? Yeah. So Experience life way yeah. more. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's where it starts off too, right? At a younger age because we, we tend to like underestimate like these kids. Yeah. They just don't know anything. But yeah. The, yeah. the greatest minds come starting at the younger age, right? Because yeah. imagine like they're drawing and stuff like that. Even I have, a, I have a nephew that's seven years old. It's crazy. Just amount of like this kid knows. It's yeah. just insane. Like, <laughs> and it just puts me into perspective. Like, man, I'm like, if we if we're able to give this, you know, pass it forward to, in a sense, giving them the, the space to be creative. Oh, yeah. Just imagine how it is going to be 10, 20 years down the road. Yeah. Like going kind of building off your your point, like my niece, she's eight years old. She draws better than I ever did at that age. Yeah. Anyway, my, my, my mom's always sending like photos of her sketches. My like, bro, these are good. She's looking at YouTube videos. She's not following the tutorial. She's looking at the picture online yeah, and just following it. I'm like, bro, like you're eight years old and you're crushing you're doing, it. Yeah. So I'm like, I told I told my sister, like, like I'm like, bro, you, you have to keep fostering right. this. Exactly. Yeah. You have you can't be like, no, you can't do this. Put this yeah. away. Like you don't know where it's gonna take her exactly. or anyone, exactly. right? 
Yeah, and picking off, uh, piggybacking off of that, and then I think uh, when it comes to having this support system around you, you know, uh, for example, I think people don't realize how helping your significant other, whether it's your brother, your cousin, just supporting the people around you that are doing what they love to do, and just showcasing that. And you know, prime example is your brother. Yeah, you know, and uh, we'll take it to the story back, and you know, when you get started, how y'all started, <laughs> right? Because at the end of the yeah. day, that that support level from your brother allowed you to, you know understand what your capabilities are you know in in a way be like oh shit, i can actually something. do this yeah right yeah so you know I, I feel like take people down the path where like what that support system does for your confidence for your ability to look at a life from a different you know understanding yeah and how you process that man well again i, I think maybe I, I hit the lottery in terms of like the support system i grew up <laughs> and i'm not trying to brag it's yeah, just i was yeah. very lucky where it's like Whatever I wanted to try, they would just like give it a shot. Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? Just give it a shot. So when my brother and I started this whole like fashion clothing line art <laughs> journey back in 2015, we went to Vegas. We met Floyd Mayweather. Long story short, yeah. <laughs> um, that kind of catapulted and like catalyzed everything that that's happening today. So it pretty much showed me that like if one person believes in you, because you can believe in yourself, but sometimes we think, am I crazy to think this? Exactly. It, are other people seeing what I'm seeing? But when you have one person, whether it's your spouse, your sibling, your me. homie, yep. a stranger. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is actually something, right? It's it's catching their attention. So yeah, having that support, of my brother, just making sure, like, it's, I, that's where I kind of learned, like, to how to make sure to deal with people, close business, how to deal with a no, how to deal with obstacles, and like, when things don't work out, like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna fold? Are you gonna crumble? Or are you exactly. just like, all right, let's let's get it again. Yep. Just, let's yep. pick it up, pick ourselves back up, and let's go. And like leaning into that, like when I got married, like my wife was like same thing like like her and my brother i always say like they bring me back down to earth when something crazy happens like a huge project or a new opportunity they're like okay that's cool mm. but this is only just the beginning like yeah. what's next you got so and so player athlete whatever what are you gonna do now right mm. so they kind of like they ground you in that sense it's good to have people like that because if you're always just being hyped 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 yeah you're, you're, it's gonna get to your head yeah. it's gonna inflate your ego and I think it's it's it depends like it's all about the people around you too, right? Whether yeah. it's one person or a hundred people, like that makes all the difference. Yeah. I guess it should be a lesson though for a lot of people out there, because <clears throat> like I mean, it's even just like your creativity, your creativity gets blocked often, like the people that are around you. Right? Oh yeah. So if you don't have the support system, because a lot of times now is that people are so they're they're not willing to move on or get kind of move out of the friend circle yep. that, are, that are holding you back. That right? sense right. of comfort. A yeah. sense of yeah. comfort, right? And if you have that fear that if I leave, if I move on from these people, then I'm going to be by myself. Right? You have to, sometimes you have to be by and yourself. You have to. Yeah. You have to step out of your zone, yeah. right? Because you just never know along the way, like you're going to meet someone that's going to even push you even further, right? Yeah. They're going to test your creativity. They're going to test like a lot of the stuff in yeah. your life, right? That you have so much potential in, right? Yeah. So it's just... You know, it should be a lesson to a lot of people nowadays. It's just like, make sure you step out of comfort zone. It's okay to move on, right? And really experiment and see there are a lot of people in this world. Like, even just like talk with the podcast, the amount of people that, we, that we're discussing with, right? A lot yeah. of these people, like, I tell Aaron, I'm like, yo, like, there's there's so much potential that we have. Mm -hmm. Just even, just having a casual conversation on the podcast, right? A lot of these people that we have on, on, on as guests, they're like, it gives them a different perspective. Like, okay, these, these two these two men that are on this podcast yep. are very intellect in a way they speak and um, are very open to discussions in that mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Yeah. And you just never know yeah. where you might learn, right? So, And I think kind of going back, I mean, <clears throat> taking back off that same conversation is um, understanding to let go people in your life, no matter who they are. Because, mm -hmm. oh. you know, one thing I, I, I notice a lot, um, a lot of the people that are my family, Man, they often make condescending remarks in regards to what you're doing. Oh, of course. It, it, it's, it's like it's kind of like it's like hurt for you sitting there, right? It's like something you're passionate about. It's always your own people. It's it always is. your own yeah. people. It's like your own people. You're passionate about something, yeah. right? And then they speak in a condescending manner, or they try to poke fun. But what they don't realize is how much impact those words have. Oh yeah, for oh, sure. You get what I'm saying? And I tell people, man, you don't need nobody, but like you don't need anybody to validate your work as long as the, what you're putting out there has impact in regards to someone reached out to you. When it comes mm -hmm. to people around you, they're like, you know, maybe being condescending remarks, making fun of you, poking fun of you. No, man, ignore all that because I feel like being by yourself rather than having that environment just to fit in, yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like you're way better You're off. limiting yourself. Yeah, because oh, yeah. yeah. the thing is, man, like I even realized now, because like, it's funny, I was talking to my cousin, one of my close friends. I'm like, bro, I don't talk to people. 
I don't. I'm like, is it, I, <laughs> I have three people I talk to. Yeah. That's it. There's yeah. too much negative energy out there, and then it's not just negative energy. Like you have to be very careful with like who claps when you're succeeding, like yeah. or who stays silent. Mm-hmm. So even if they don't say things, it shows in their actions. Like there's there, there are friends that I've had since grade seven, almost over 20 years. I stopped talking to them because of, well, not because of COVID, but because like you know distance, right? Like yeah. they saw, like I kind of started doing my the things that I'm doing, but then I saw that there wasn't that. They weren't clapping, clapping right? Yeah, yeah. But then I have my homies from grade eight, grade nine. Still to this day, they're my they're my ride or die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I have friends from like a year and a half ago. They're like, I'm like, those are lifers now, yep. right? So it's the quality or the quantity of the friendship or, like, or any kind of relationship where yeah, it's like, yeah. it's never personal. It's just like it's just not it's not going to help you grow. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of people are going to envy your success no matter what you do. Is there's, there's going to be something <clears> that you're doing they wish they did, but now they can't do it. And it might not even be jealousy or envy. It might just be like they might make might feel worse about themselves. Like okay, maybe I'm, maybe yeah. why why didn't I chase this or why didn't mm-hmm. I do that? Yeah. Like, that's never the goal. You're never supposed to make someone feel bad. But again, like if you still don't want to be around that energy because yeah, it, it, do, it definitely sucks things you know yeah, like, out of you. Exactly. So I, I think people just need to disassociate themselves from the world. I, I'm a strong believer in that. To a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the time you got to disconnect yourself to a point where like a lot of people can't be by themselves. You know, yeah. that's what I see nowadays. People it's true. can't be by themselves. It's true. Like this thing that we have, this phone, is a disease, man. I'm telling oh, yeah, you. Yeah. Like people can't get off of it. It's like a, some sort of like addiction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the social media, just constantly scrolling on your phone, yeah, yeah. just being with your own thoughts and just, you know, understanding where you are yeah. in life and reflecting on it. I, I feel like it's just slowly slowly is deteriorating oh you know? yeah and um yeah man people just got to disconnect from all the negative energy or even people that are not there for you cheering on because at the end of the day people that want to see you do good yeah they will do good they oh, will they'll, share they'll, the right people always come yeah come your always come. they will share come. your art yeah, yeah. you know what? there's so many of my cousin like even i was telling mook i'm like man it's good to see my cousin that like we share a podcast that comment and yeah. stuff because that's genuine love they, yeah. they yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. to do that they don't right? have to but, but but they do because they care for you mm-hmm. and those people yeah. are the one that really are gonna be there for you no matter what. It's not like I'm we're making millions off this podcast for yeah. no matter that couldn't make it doesn't make anything to you. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like they're not coming for me. They're like, yo, I mean, like, I know you're doing this, da da da. Like they're not asking you no know, for favors. Those yeah. are the people that you gotta keep close. There's also to. there's also like also like people along what you're talking about too. It's just along the people that that are not in your that are in your circle, but they're what you're saying, right? They they don't they seem genuine. But like when you when they start seeing that you're actually doing stuff, it's out of jealousy that they start hating it, right? Yeah. What they say is just like along the way, they'll start hating you. But when you get to the top, then they come back. They're like, oh, you know, remember I helped you out as well, right? Or like so, I always believed in you. Yeah. <laughs> I always knew you could do it, bro. Now that you have connections, yeah. you have this yeah, popularity like, and stuff. I was like, what are you oh, trying yeah. to do? <laughs> remember that one time? Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember back in grade eight yeah. you know, when I said your drawing is nice? Remember I give you my I give you uh, yeah, my man. lunch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember my mom made roti for you? Like, yeah. <laughs> I had that happen like when I when we met Floyd back in 2015 in Vegas and I obviously had to post about it right yeah, so yeah. otherwise no one would believe me they're like yo I had buddies saying bro send in my well wishes I'm like no I'm not <laughs> he's like bro let me take you over for, for lunch I'm like bro you you haven't spoken to me in over two years why do you want to take me over for lunch now like you're not uh, you're not getting anything from this like yeah. <laughs> Like give me, you know, give me dinner, bro. Like, yeah. no, just kidding. no, but it's like you, you, they come out of the the what's what's it called the, the woodworks, the woodworks, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's just it's just it's just funny how to see you know that all that happens. But you know, one thing I think people will inspire when it comes to your work is um not only like genuine care for your work is also how you're able to network really good. Mm-hmm. And I feel like network is power, especially in today's world. Because uh, at the end of the day, like when we have, you know, when it comes to social media compared to back in imagine 2014, yeah. right? It was like a slow grind, like yeah. working up to 2024, you know, yeah. starting from 2015 to now, it's like a slow grind. But with networking, it allows you to reach mass audiences. Yeah. Literally sending out cold DMs, whatever it it's is. It's literally cold calling, but the new new version of it, man. New age yeah. cold calling. Instead of door knocking, you're just DMing people, DMing. commenting yeah. on their. I I am not even joking. It's <laughs> they'll either respond to it or they don't. And if yeah. they do, it's it's it can become like a snowball of uh, snowball effect, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's the one thing I think we talked about last time as well. Uh, how like not to get deterred from like a no and don't be deterred by them not replying back well it's not just it's not just a no like if if you get a no okay great but even if you get a yes don't don't let that get to your head don't don't think that the same formula is going to work every single time (laughs) every person is different like you have a different sense of fashion you have a different sense of fashion you guys have different things but you're Mm -hmm. very similar too like just Mm -hmm. in personality i guess but a no isn't always a no and a yes isn't always going to be a yes right so you go back to the drawing work case how did this work 
Mm-hmm. How did this not work? And what can I improve on next time? Mm-hmm. I got the yes, I got the project, I got whatever. How can I do it even better next time? Yeah. It's so it's, it's it's always kind of that sense of like always just looking to just one up yourself. Because mm-hmm. again, you're only and this is cliche as heck to say, but your only competition is yourself. Yeah. Right. Yes, you're not my true. competition. No, you're not. It's just you yourself and whatever. Mm. So if you aren't seeing those improvements, if you're not competing with how you were last year, mm. then like there's an issue there. Right. right. You can't be focused on what other people are doing. No, no, yeah, no. Right? You definitely got to appreciate too the fact that you will that you're able to reach out and yeah. DM people because that, that just those progress of like what you're doing. Right. It's just yeah. you're doing all these, you know, the artwork and stuff. And the fact that you're reaching out, be like, hey, look, like be sick to have a painting in your gym sign. or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And like what you're saying is whether it's a yes or no, just remember, like the people that you meet. I've One thing I found is that people that are up there, up there, they're the most genuine people. People are very mistaken. Like, OK, yeah. you know what? They're they're very egotistic and all that. Yeah, sort of not, man. I feel like the people that are trying to make it, they're more full of themselves. 100%. They 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 show off the most, they act the most yep. flashy. You say, bro, just relax, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even you're not there yet, but even when you get there, just be a good person, man. Yeah. Like people people value that more than anything, mm-hmm. right? That's so true. And then, you know, kind of what people get lost nowadays <laughs> is like I don't know. They have this weird intuition about like I gotta portray myself as such, mm-hmm. you know. And kind of going off what Muk said is having your ego hurt. Be like, oh, they didn't reply. Oh, then they're, they're not going hiring me or yeah, they, yeah. they're not gonna look at my work i feel like people gotta diminish their ego and be like understanding those people are busy it's not just that they're like if, if you're busy they're busy but it's also it's nothing personal bro yeah, like, personal. it's whether it's a job application or just a client online like it's if they get get back to you with a no it's it is what it is it right is it like is, how yeah. do you take that and again it, i think that what, that's what makes or breaks a lot of entrepreneurs nowadays where it's like can they deal with it mm-hmm. can they deal with like that 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 you know 10 no's before they get that one yes, one yes right yeah. and that just kind of makes or breaks everything yeah. or determines yeah, the yeah, next I mean, steps right it's so true um like even when, how, when it comes to curry man like for people people don't realize it's like his form of shooting i'm like i've never seen it like yeah. a person i like i play basketball i'm a shooter i love shooting yeah mm. but the amount of like shots he makes it look easy oh yeah and mm. from how far he does it what Crazy. people don't realize in the back end this guy's taking millions of shots a year Oh, oh yeah. yeah, a year. Yeah, imagine if he didn't do that. So people out there that think, man, like yo, crazy all this, but yeah, you don't. You're not with him every day. You're not with even, him every practice. Yeah, even LeBron, bro. Like, any of these guys, bro. Like, they don't just stop after the yeah. first ring. They don't just stop when they make it to <laughs> the like league. And they make millions of dollars. Like, okay, how can I just be the best version of myself? Self, exactly. Like, you think LeBron, he's he's in his twenty first or twentieth season. You don't think he's still trying to be better than he was five years ago? Yeah, know, he's man. forty. Not not forty. He's almost. He's 41. pretty much forty, yeah. and he's dropping forty points. I'm like, it's crazy. I'm thirty one. My lower back is hurting. Like, <laughs> I need like, physio. Literally, I need, I need physio. physio. <laughs> like this guy's hamstrings are bigger than my face. Like that's the thing. Like you don't just wake up and you're good. Everybody has their own process, right? right? Like, Everyone has Steph their own. Curry. Like before he's taking those million shots, man. People don't remember when he first was drafted. He wasn't drafted in the first round or anything like that. Sorry. This guy was like, had a, he injured his what his ankle or something something yeah, along the lines. Yeah, coming up. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then it's just you know people got to recognize, man. This guy got into the league, you know, not being recognized for what he for what he is, right? For who he is, he need to build that shit up, man. He need to recover. He had to take those millions of shots, and not, yep. even till it's t- till uh, till this day, he's still consistent. He's mm-hmm. taking those shots again, right? Yeah. So. Well, that consistency is because you don't stop the work. Right. Exactly. Even if you're 10, 12 years into it, why stop? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And straight away from like this is gonna be a different conversation. I think one thing conversation that it really intrigues me, man. I, I'm serious. It's about um how you kind of navigate when it comes to parenthood. What I mean by that is, especially nowadays, like as we've seen how like crazy storylines has been coming as of, as a recent where like this liberalistic agenda that gets pushed on nowadays. Especially when it comes to kids that are of no understanding of these things yeah, but get, yeah. and these things are pushed on them at an early age and when you question that or you don't want your kids to be in that environment mm-hmm. then you get portrayed as somebody who's oh anti-semi or you are against this people there's a fucking goddamn hundred genders out there these days yeah. like personally like, i believe in two man no disrespect to everybody's a male and a female right yeah, yeah but yeah. now like we are forced to take on these gender roles where you got to be this, that, da, 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 da. And now, how do you navigate that with your kids? Because like now they're in, in a string where their friends at yeah. the circle or in the school, yeah. they're telling you this. But when you come home, be like, dad, but this, that, this. I feel like it's the same thing with any kind of like career you take. Like you don't yeah. force anything on the kid. Like me and my wife talk about this every now and then. Like when something happens in the news, we're like, we're just going to let them be kids. That's the biggest thing that I think yeah. you need to understand. Like let your kids be kids. Like our parents didn't force us to do whatever. Like we, 
it just ha- like whatever our life became just kind of happened through experiences through yeah. life through mm-hmm. us seeing okay what works for me what doesn't work for me and for us like we have a certain sets of beliefs you know we we, we follow like we're, we're muslims like we follow certain things yeah. but we also tell our kids like if if you have friends that are you know part of the like well certain communities don't be an asshole yeah. no, no. like be kind to them i have it's friends that are from the certain communities whether it's religious groups or like you know the lgbtq community yeah. like i show them so much love they show yeah, me love yeah. i mean it's yeah. nothing like i'm not forcing my religion on them exactly. i'm not forcing yeah. my lifestyle on anyone and it's just that's just how it is like you no one's no one's gonna be the same exactly. we're not all gonna be beige freaking mm-hmm. clones of each other yeah so it's more like we just see some be kind that's yeah. the biggest thing just be kind like even if it's something that's against what you believe in unless the person is hurting you or hurting other people mm-hmm. be kind you, yeah, like what exactly. do you you're not you're not losing anything by just being a nice person yeah exactly. and maybe that helps someone going through a tough time maybe that helps someone better understand themselves yeah. or whatever the case may be I, right yeah. and but, i think that's key because like even people tell me but like man you're this that i'm like i got no hate in my heart for no yeah like, no you know whether you know as you said with the lgbt communities i got nothing against them yeah. mm-hmm. you know i'll support them if they need support but as you said like everybody has their own personal sets of beliefs well, not just and in terms of like, yourself. yeah, even like, rela- like especially nowadays with everything that's happening in Palestine, yeah. it's like, I love Jewish people. A lot of my clients are Jewish people. It's like, there's a difference between like what is happening there and what is actually represented, like, like what the actual faith is, for mm-hmm. example, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm Muslim, but then that doesn't make every Muslim or, you know, everyone Muslim Muslim my bad guy because of you know, yeah. certain groups of people. Yeah. Just like not every Jewish person is a bad person because... I want to touch upon this a little bit more. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a spicy topic, but it I'm is. glad we're talking about it. Like, but you know what it is also when it, going back to this topic? What, I'm, what we're seeing now is um, I think the hatred is becoming amongst human beings each other. So what I mean by that is what people are straying away is what we are fighting against. Mm-hmm. So the main people, like for example, let's take um, Israel and let's take Palestine. So Palestine has been oppressed for many years when it comes from, you know, the early 90s and going 1948 on. 1948 to be yeah, exact. Yeah, like to be exact, right? So now your people are being oppressed. What people don't understand is when your people are being oppressed and you're constantly getting, you know, whether it's food deprived, job deprived, bombed, opportunity, bombed, yeah, literally. artilleries are falling on your houses. So imagine you or as a kid is seeing that. Yeah. Now you're growing up. How are you supposed to be considerate of what's happening to your parents and not have, not even parents, your whole community, your whole country. Yeah. And now these kids grow up where there's almost like a hate in their heart. And what, on the other side, what they don't see is, you know, is a consideration is they're human beings. I see mm-hmm. what they're going through. Yeah. Let me, let, let, let us, let's join forces. For me, whether it's Palestine or whether it's Israel, I feel like people need to come together and condemn the action of the government that, that's in place. Like yeah. I, I'm against Hamas what they did, but I'm almost against what Israel is doing right now. So I think where the camaraderie needs to come is amongst the people, each other, not hating on each other. Cause remember there was this one video that was put up recently where there was this Israeli supporters and, um, and um, Palestinian. Palestinian bro, that broke my heart. Reason why mm. it's just perpetuating more and more hate. Now yeah. imagine if you could sit down and have a conversation about it, but like, why are you hurt? And why are you so hurt? Yeah. But they can't be oblivious to what's happening right now. It's a literally a hap- act of genocide. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and look yeah. what happened literally two days ago. But uh, that Canadian the journal, uh, the uh, not the journalist. It's the, the, the aid or something. The food aid yeah, people. Food aid. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're literally bombed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, a Canadian so. family that got killed. And guess what? That's been happening con- continuously for how months now, right? Yeah. It, it made more awareness now. Everybody wants to look at, oh, we'll, we'll do investigation now because now there's a foreign... Uh, well, it was seven people, I think. One was from Canada, three or four from the UK, okay, one yeah. from like Poland. So it's like, yeah. it makes a difference when they're like, when they don't look like us. Exactly, right? so yeah. Like, is that, is it, where, is, where do you draw the line of like, how do you value human and that's life, the right? shameful, like yeah. that's a shameful, you know, way to kind of justify those people that lost their life before that, that were doing the exact same job, but their title of Palestinians but these people have a title of a Canadian. Oh, yeah. we're going to launch an investigation. No, 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 no. You should have launched it back in October, yeah. my guy. What is that going to do? When yeah. people yeah. are losing humanitarian aid, yeah. that people are in need, in need. and yeah, it's yeah. not going to those people, there should be an investigation law right then and there. Well, let's not this way. When, when, when you're bombing every hospital, when you're bombing, <laughs> when you're bombing oh. generators that power incubators in the ICUs and like the NICUs, when people are getting shot while they're waiting in line for food. Yeah. Like I'm fasting today. Like I know I'm going to eat in like less than an hour, but some people have, haven't broken their fast in like a week, week. right? Know, three, yeah. f- three, four days a week. So it's like when every major humanitarian like rule has been broken in the last six months, 
now you want to call for like an investigation say like, come on like and, and that's the sad part is like we place value given where they're from you mm-hmm. know it, 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 it we diminish in the in the western countries and these powerful countries they diminish the value of these people in the middle east or whatever happening in palestine now. yeah mm-hmm. and you know I, i'm a big advocate of understanding their life through their their, their shoes we can never live it, but we can yeah. understand it. We can understand it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I tell people. I'm like, don't jump to conclusions. No. You know, Amana, like even when it, going back to when 9-11 happened. Yeah. Look how many people were just plugged into this one little thing that a Muslim, automatically bad. But six, they're in that too. Fuck them too. All the taxi drivers are terrorists. Anyone that, with a beard or a turban, anything, anything turban, on their head, automatically you're, you're an asshole. Yeah. And the fact that, and this is the propaganda that's been put out that people falling victim to. Don't take what the mainstream media, you know, puts out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take your own action to be like, okay, let me understand what has happened in that region, or why is it these people are so against our country? Oh, we've been oppressing them since 1940. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I see where their hate is coming from. Yeah. yeah Nobody yeah. just born with hate. No. no hate no. comes from a place. Yeah. You know, and going back to even look at Yemen. Yemen's mm-hmm. been bombed for how long, man? People don't even have like a proper house to live in. Yeah. Yeah. There was this one, uh, this is one artist, man. I love his art. Um, it's like Erg, Erg Gallery. I, I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, I think I know who yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. So he he deciphers a parallel universe that we live in. Hmm. He'll put up like a half a photo of, from a, let's say a tragic place or some sort of atrocities that's happening around the world and compared to the world that we live in today. Mm. You know, th- there yeah. was just one photo of a kid with, I think uh, like a gun and another one, uh, other side with a holding a lunch bag. Mm. yeah so two complete opposite sides That's of the size, spectrum yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and it was it was kind of interesting his work he sometimes he gets backlash but yeah, it course. was just cool to show that we do live in a parallel universe to yeah, we do so i mean fun. you can't you can't be having the oscars and the grammys and all these yeah. crazy events the nba finals while literally thirty thousand people have been killed, killed. Fifteen thousand kids even like people in israel they're fed up with it like they, they they want their family members back they want their hostages back they want the government out it's like Again, people need to understand it's not just a Muslim versus Jewish thing. No, that's no. not the issue at all. Because Palestine isn't just a Muslim country. There's Jews, there's Christians, there's, there's everyone, everyone, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, at most of these Palestine rallies, there's there's so many Jewish people, man. There's mm-hmm. so many white people, so many brown people, so it many Asian, everyone, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just about oh, like we hate. No, it's not about this. It's about when a, gov- a government gets in control with the wrong people, or like when they have the wrong intentions. It doesn't matter if they're Jewish or not or Muslim. Yeah. If you're being an asshole, that's you need to be stopped, right? Yeah, Simple as that. Yeah, I mean, I, I always stay firm to it there's only one race which is a human race yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't have any color it doesn't have any religion it doesn't have any face mm-hmm. it just has a person that's sitting across you yeah. you bleed the same blood i am both of us are red it ain't no different colors Literally. you know so i think people gotta understand be like we gotta we gotta be the voices for the people that are unheard and if we're not the people if we're not the ones that are pushing those stories out no one is yeah mm-hmm. we're constantly those people are going to be constantly going to be oppressed these talks are never going to come about and you know and look at even in Canada now, you know, kind of not going into it, how they're censoring a lot of what we put out. You know, we, we say we're a democratic country, but when you're pushing laws that are censoring certain topics, certain subjects to even talk about on mainstream media, yeah. how is that promoting transparency? And how is that promoting for people to feel safe in a country where they can just voice their opinion without an issue? Mm-hmm. But now I don't know, it, which Trudeau gets a lot of hate, rightfully so. You know, yeah. there's so much shit that I feel like he, as a president, I mean prime minister, that he, I don't think he was ready for this role. No, I, I truly don't. Because like, in the mix of everything, well, he lost his, he, he failed in his relationship. Mm-hmm. His wife wouldn't want to know part of it because yeah. there's a reason why. Yeah, you know, there's a reason why. Like I'm a firm believer. If you can't keep your own house together, how are you gonna keep a whole country together? Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, 100. Like you know, I don't know. Like God, I, I don't know what's what's happening, but it, it's a fact of matter. Yeah, you know. So and that's the man who's leading our country. <laughs> yeah, it's only being presented what what's what they want, right? It's a lot of selfishness. It's like okay, like this is the information I want the public to see. Mm-hmm. Like this is what you're gonna get. But people don't people who like are so quick to judge they're so quick to really believe like what's being presented to them so like on social media news whatever it is is people don't really have the patience to really step, take a step back and really yeah. understand the full story behind it yeah so i think the last message on this topic because we could talk about this all day no I mean, I'm it's, 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 a, it's a spicy topic it is because <laughs> it, it really is like for me i just tell people man um sit down and have a conversation no matter who it is 
and understand the pain they're going through. You gotta have the tough talks. Exactly. Yeah. Understand their pain they're going through, man. Don't jump to conclusion. Don't condemn certain people. Don't say be like this person is negative. He's putting out hate. No, be like, hey, where's your pain coming from? Yeah. Get yeah. rid of the emotions I'm, too, right? Don't be yeah. so quick to judge. Yeah. Really fully understand and sit there and be like able to have that. They do. I have clients in, in, for example, in California. Like they're Jewish. They're very active in the community. They yeah. we talk. We're like, yo, what the fuck What's is going, going on? on? Like, what yeah. is happening? Like he, yeah. they, like uh, he, he's a very big basketball fan. Like he's a huge Denver Nuggets fan. He's like, mm. bro, what is happening is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like how? Like yeah. why is this happening? Like so, it's not just a matter of, you know, us versus you. It's a matter of right. It's it's literally right versus wrong. Yeah, right. Yeah. Humanity versus inhumanity. Yeah, so I it's mean, like whenever is it tragic when the human life's what at is stake? It? Yeah, like, it's tragic no matter where it is. If this was happening in anywhere else, it doesn't just have to be the Middle East. It doesn't just have to be a Muslim country. Yeah, I would still anyway. feel for the people. It's yeah. like it's just a matter of basic human rights being violated. People losing their lives for no reason. Yeah. And on both sides, either way, wherever, wherever you look at it, yeah. like it's not, it's not good. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I mean, it was going to be more and more divided amongst people. I think people has got to come together rather than letting the political views uh, divert them away farther and farther, because yeah. that's what's going to lead to more and more conflict. So people got to stick together and understand that we got to stand together, no matter you're Jewish, as you said, or Muslim, yeah. whether you're Christian, whether you're yeah. Sikh, Buddhist, yeah. no matter what it is. As a community, stand together and condemn the action of the people that are at the top level, which is you know political leaders. Mm -hmm. Hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we hold them accountable, they have nowhere to run. Yeah. They don't, they don't. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a million people outside your door. What are they gonna say? No. Yeah. yeah. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of you know? here. Yeah. yeah. So people just gotta stand together, man. It's the wrong type of delusion, man. <laughs> yeah. But, it's, uh, yeah. No, nah, that topic is a. Uh, it's, uh, it's a touching one for a lot of people. I know we briefly so. talked about it last time, but like, I'm glad we kind of touched on it more yeah. today. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to talk about it personally because I love reading, uh, reading yeah. about it because like, I'm an advocate of no matter where the yeah. genocide is taking place, yeah. it, it's um, it's unethical. Like even when I was in Burma, uh, yeah. in Myanmar, yeah. take that in. That was in 2014, I want to say. Mm. I, I, so it's a Rohingya small population. Yes, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, the Rohingya. So it's yeah, a Rohingya yeah. population, a small population in Burma. Mm. Burma, for people that don't know, it's predominantly a Buddhist country. Mm. So it's like a million people in this small little area. And to this day, if you go in Bangladesh, I forgot what the uh, city name is. They mm. hold one of the biggest refugee camps that's not funded by no non for profit mm. organization. Take that in. One of the biggest refugee camps in the world mm. that's not funded by no non for profit organization. Mm. And why why were those people that were targeted in, in burma simply for the fact that the, that country wanted a predominantly buddhist country mm -hmm. and those people were in the way and guess what their houses got burnt down women got raped men got slaughtered their bloodline got ended no did you i'm sure people didn't hear about we heard it. about it but then it got, it it got, got brushed under the rug touch. right yeah, they got the, oh, hush, but that's hush. the thing like it that's again important fact looking at the camera that's not a reflection of the buddhist faith or no, the buddhist no, people that's not. just an extreme group that took things way that just too seriously. flawed ideology that yeah, they think that literally. is how we got to pursue and yeah. the worst part it was the leader of that country then the, i think the following year won the nobel peace prize and i'm like yeah it's crazy <laughs> I remember that part. Let me just slaughter Crazy. a million people and then give me a Nobel Peace Nobel Prize. Prize. Give me a prize. <laughs> Say, what are you doing? I'm like, see, let so, me slap you right now. You shake my hand after, right? Like, it makes you know no sense. I mean? Like these topics, like, I read deep into, like even the Middle East. Like I looked at the history of like Iran and Iraq because my dad actually was, we grew up in, or not grew up. He lived in Iran for ten years. Oh, nice. He oh, knows okay. Farsi and everything. Oh, sick. So he lived there during the civil war when Iran and Iraq happened and the stalemate happened. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, that's cool. He told me, but like that changed his perspective on how he looked at life. Because mm. the shit that he saw, only he uh, saw. Our, he our, our issues here are not issues. If they're like, not issues. Yeah, well, there's a job, business, money. Like, like we, we still get by. Oh, yeah. We will still survive. Like, when you literally have, especially now because I've got kids. Like, anytime I see these videos of these kids hurting, whether it's in Palestine or in Iraq or anywhere, Congo. Yeah. Like, what's Congo, happening in the Congo yeah. right now? So it's terrible. Sad, All for precious metals for phones, right? Isn't that crazy? Like, kids don't <laughs> deserve the shit. Kids no. deserve a child. Or kids deserve a chance at a life. Yeah. Whether you're doesn't matter where you're from right like that's no one should ever go through this right yeah, yeah. yeah. it's tough it definitely does like, i'm assuming your dad's whole perspective just changed on everything like no, what 100%. the hell like, yeah. the, like even the way he kind of carried himself after because you see so much stuff like emotionally you get traumatized yeah because those things you can't unsee you're not I mean, just watching videos and hearing stories so he probably lived some of he, it too yeah, right? exactly because so. he did say there was one time where like um i don't know where they were but it was like in a in a war zone so there was this one kid um, that got shot and obviously they had to run away. But that mother, she's like, no, I'm not leaving my kid. Yeah. I must take mm -hmm. my kid. But then they were like, this is my dad's like, there was shots coming in. Like we had to what go. What did your dad do? 
So my dad was a truck driver. Yeah. So he moved. So he moved from India when he was eighteen and moved down there for a job and everything. That's a crazy place yeah. to drive a truck, man. Yeah, I know. So yeah. he moved down there for ten years. He lived yeah. down there. But that story was like so crazy to me. He's like, we really have to snatch the mother and go. Oh, left wow. the kid there. Left the kid because you yeah. you either you, you live or everybody dies. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So they had to. I'm like, so for me, I got a different understanding of the way he kind of goes about life because I never looked at how that kind of emotionally or mentally messed his head up mm -hmm. you know probably also made it more cautious around like you like his his own kids like yeah, making yeah, sure that yeah, you guys yeah. are fully no, no, protected no, like, exactly and right? for, for, with me he's always been so protective yeah. i never understood why he was so hard on me i don't yeah. i'm like damn i'm like nothing impresses you man God, you hate me bro you hate me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit. i'm like you're my hardest critic but at the end of the day the love even if i for example like i tell him this my parents had this weird connection with me. if i'm gone for two hours like somewhere i don't answer my call yeah i'll end the night with at least 10 to 20 minutes calls. <laughs> oh yeah they freak oh, yeah. out but that, yeah. that shows the genuine love it's, it's, love it's not trying to control like you no. we see this when we're older like whether we, when we have kids or when yeah. we're just older it's yeah. like they weren't trying to be controlling they, they were just genuinely concerned concerned yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they want to make sure that your kid is all right yeah, right yeah, so yeah. but anyway that was a crazy ass story <laughs> that's crazy but yeah, yeah. but that had a crazy story i was you know and then he's smart as hell because he's seeing yeah. the world with his eyes yeah that's the best type of knowledge you can get oh yeah and he's so smart like he's he, i think he dropped out of like grade i think like nine or something he's not like he's not educated but yeah. when it comes to understanding the world and how much knowledge this guy has yeah he'd be randomly telling me these things i'm like how do you know this how yeah. do you know this? i just do <laughs> yeah. like, trust me i just no, do he just does. i just do he has so crazy. much knowledge that i would never even like, don't like, ask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he even challenges me sometimes he's like oh do you know this and i'm like no he's like so new. then he'll start bashing me yeah. Yeah. he's like you guys gonna study and change you don't know anything yeah he's like he's like yeah. it's it's you can't imagine again kind of going back to the first thing we talked about like our parents like they came at no no internet no social media no, no yeah. that freaking uh was it the phone cars the phone cars <laughs> well, the, phone the creepy yeah. minutes i remember like my parents would always get it from like the like the the the, the indian stores i'm like bro what are these minute cars <laughs> yeah. oh we only have 10 minutes to call back on the box and uh, talk about whatever you want in 10 minutes and that's it yeah i'm like they didn't have like the the connectivity that we have now it's yeah. like, like even my, my own mother-in-law she she would be writing letters to her siblings back home when she moved here i'm like letters can get lost in the mail they can get like mm -hmm. damaged whatever i'm like yeah. We're so lucky, bro. We have nothing privileged. to complain about. And, then, and even like going, you know, further in regards to that, even when the first people of that came from India, mm. what they came on ships. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Imagine the, how many months was it that, the Komagata Maru or whatever? I read about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So imagine how many months that took on a ship going from India to all the way down to. And they're like, yeah, you can't get off. And you can't get the off. The fact they off. had to go back. Yeah, yeah, and you can't get off. Can't imagine get off, that yeah. journey. Yeah. And we complain Crazy. about man, I got flight got delayed. Man, I should try. Like, let's put it this way: you probably wouldn't go to Iraq or Iran yeah, to yeah, try, no, drive a truck, no, right? No, no, no. I I wouldn't because my dad was a job. He'd work in the boonies, like yeah. no connection, nothing, just in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, I can't do that, bro. Yeah, right? But again, like they did what they need, needed to do to allow us to be doing what we're doing today. We're doing today right? yeah. so, so that's why I feel like you know we as individual have more gratitudes for them. Oh, yeah. And I think we you know understand that. So mm -hmm. when they shit on us, there's a reason they shit on us. They, they, <laughs> they, they have the right to do it. <laughs> the thing is, they know what really life means as being hard. They yeah, know yeah. what life is yeah, when yeah. it's hard. Yeah. They know when be like, damn, like what's tomorrow's gonna look like? What's the end of month? My, like, my dad would always be like, you were born and raised here, right? I'm like, yeah, like you know the <laughs> language, right? I'm like, yeah. So why don't you use your tongue and speak uh, up? I'm like whether real quick. whether it's at the grocery store or at school, or someone's talking crap or like disrespecting. Yeah. Like, Stand up for yourself. Like yeah. if if you deserve, if you think you deserve more, then speak up, mm. right? Whether it's yeah. job, salary, whatever. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you know, there's one thing I wanted I wanted to speak, uh, uh, talk about in regards to what you said groceries, uh, stores. You know, one thing I feel like a lot of people are shying away is speaking in our own language in public. Bro, uh, and even that's dressing. very true. Even dressing. Yeah, you know, dressing. You know it's, it's for me. I I speak. I'm loud. Y'all, y'all know. I'm yeah. loud. I speak Punjabi yeah. in public. Like I'm not like freaking yeah. belligerent. But yeah, yeah, for yeah. me, if my mom's talking Punjabi, I'm not gonna give her an answer in, in English. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my mom will be like, get out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. But but now kids, they're like, I'm like, you're ashamed of it. Yeah, why you're the embarrassed. hell are you ashamed? That's who you are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what your parents raised it to you uh, mm -hmm. to be. You know. So even when going as you said, even dressing up in a kurta pyjama. If I could wear a kurta pyjama everywhere I go, I would wear one. It's oh, the dude. Thing you I think it's so comfy. <laughs> like three days ago, like is that we had we had an iftar dinner. I had to run to Walmart yeah. to grab something. Like, Fuck yeah, yeah. Put on my shades. <laughs> put on my Jordans. I'm good to go. Like I don't care. Yeah, like, please embrace the culture. Yeah. Don't be afraid to be like oh what they're gonna think 
Yeah, it's the small, uh, smallest things, man. I mean, you got to take them serious. And it's just like... Do, do your kids ever talk about that? <laughs> I mean, they, they can barely talk right now. But like, <laughs> we, we always like... Because uh, cause Eid's coming up. And like, it's, it's like in the middle of the week. So like, well, we're, we're just going to send them to school, but dressed up, right? Yeah. I mean, I want them to embrace this at a young age. I want them to not be shy of their culture, of their language. And also to, you know, know that they live in Canada. Like, you also yeah. have to embrace this yeah. culture too. Like, it's just, you know, have the best of both worlds. Like, that's just how kind of we grew up. And we want to instill that in them too. So it's like talk to your friends in like Urdu, Punjabi, Hindi, whatever, like yeah. to wear your dresses, wear your outfits. Yep. Like who cares? Like if yeah, anything, it teaches other, it teaches your friends, well, hey, this is where I'm from. Yeah. This is what my family does. This yeah. is where my, what, what my culture is all about. But it also shows people that, hey, they're confident in themselves. Exactly. They're not going to shy away from embracing no. who they are. No. Right? Yeah. I think that's key too. But, you know, straying away from all these like cultural <laughs> things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing you want to talk about personally with you is, man, um, having a community support around you especially being muslim do you get because like i see your work you're a huge marvel fan yeah you know that's what you grew so up on. Yeah, yeah, yeah no 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 go ahead man open your fast man you, you, <laughs> oh <laughs> sustenance it tastes good, <laughs> it tastes good. <laughs> yeah sorry um, you're but saying. no 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 uh, in regards to you know your artwork i was speaking to your brother about this i'm like you know what's the one thing that you would say to your brother that like you should do more he he said you know <laughs> i want him to do more i think he probably yeah, spoke yeah. to you about this he's like i told him to do more cultural work yeah do you feel like that's something that doesn't speak to you more or do you feel like that's just something that if it does come along you will do it or, it's, or is it just not a little the bit audience? both it's, it's more like because because my mom's always like paint more like calligraphy paint yeah, more yeah. islamic stuff. and i do like i do for her i do for certain clients i want it but mm -hmm. i'm like with my work it's very pop culture related right superheroes yeah. animes athletes yeah. things that like, characters and icons that you instantly recognize like mm -hmm. yeah that's the Lakers hoodie, right? Exactly. If I paint the Lakers jersey, yeah. or you'll know it. So I, I like to create things that connect with people regardless of where you're from, regardless of your mm -hmm. faith, your mm -hmm. culture, your background. Because look at like Dragon Ball Z, for example, the biggest anime ever. Yeah, my yeah. gateway drug when it comes to anime. <laughs> Akira Toriyama passes away like a few weeks ago. Yeah. Global mourning. mourning like yeah. whether you're Japanese, you're Chinese, Anywhere you're brown. Yeah. Yo, the cartel were mourning him, bro. Like, <laughs> Crazy like it's just that global impact of that work, that pop culture, right? So I like to create work that it just connects with anyone, right? Like you don't have to think too much about it. It doesn't have to be super like deep. So like, oh, Mickey Mouse. I like I like Mickey Mouse. My yeah. dad grew up on Mickey Mouse. My kids are growing up on Mickey Mouse, right? Yeah. So it's like generational icons, but I, I like to make them my own thing too, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes I will throw yeah. in some calligraphy. I, I might throw in like, I, I did a Venom slash Hulk painting where it's like mm -hmm. Hulk is being taken over by the Venom symbiote. Yeah, but in the background, it says, hulk and venom but in arabic calligraphy yeah, yeah and had like yeah. some graffiti on it some paint spot i'm like yeah. that's my way of kind of taking that cultural aspect of it and integrating integrating into my work where yep. it's like the, you know everyone will like it yeah but then if you understand the calligraphy you'll understand the calligraphy right. and if you just like how it looks that's also there too bridges right there's a lot of differences it bridges yeah it kind of like connects every it connects all the dots right yeah it's yeah. like you don't have to be Muslim or Arabic to appreciate it, appreciate yeah. but you also know, hey, that's that's a Spider-Man really? painting or that's a Hulk painting, right? Yeah. So, I, but, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. back to your points. It's like I, I incorporate it when I feel like it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I do have like the handful of clients that always come for like a calligraphy piece like every now and then, but mm -hmm. it's just a matter of what I feel would connect with More my audience, audience yeah. Like, yeah. And what just just what I like to paint too, right? Like yeah. not don't get me wrong, I don't like the sun. I hate it, but it's just. I love painting superheroes. No, I love painting Dragon Ball Z, right? Has your own thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you even know? even for myself, like, at an early age, I don't know when it started, but, like, I remember the days where I'll wake up at 4 a.m. just to watch Dragon Ball Z, the episodes come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, um, you know, it was just, like, a lot of the things, like, you know, like, Dragon Ball Z was my thing. Yeah, it was my thing. I would always. I never watch. got an anime. Oh, I don't know bro, why. You're bro, missing you're missing out. out. I know so my doesn't doing? tell me that like, what is wrong with you. I'm no, like, relax. Bro. Are you attacking me? They're like, no, don't talk. I'm just gonna show you something. Uh, <laughs> it reminded me. Uh, hope, hope you don't mind that. No, 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 no. <laughs> It was uh, Dragon Ball Z. It pre pretty much what you're talking about, like your culture mixed with your passion, right? Mm. So we'll zoom into it. Don't worry. We'll zoom into it. <laughs> <laughs> so Goku. Rocking Ooh. the full, like, you know, kurta pajama, okay, we'll the, the, we'll the, the topi, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> he's, about, to he's about to go for namaz, he's about to pray. That's but so see, like, that's cool. It's, it's so cool. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's not mainstream. It's not the yeah. main version, but it's a nice interpretation, yeah. right? Exactly. But it's a lot of, like, uh, you know, how much it impacts you at a younger age, too. Like, I was saying, like, at a young age, for me, I really got into Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. I would watch... You know, Goku trying to do like handstand push ups. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, shit, man. I'm like, I'm I can do that. that. I want to do that shit. <laughs> First off, I was like, oh, bro, yeah, I'm going to yeah. really humble myself here. But <laughs> yeah. it's just seeing like, because like, it's really cheesy. I mean, people will say it's really cheesy, but if you really 
really understand the dialogue and the stuff that they say, right? It's mm-hmm. quite relatable. It kind of influences you in your own. Let's say if you want to take a fitness journey, right? It mm-hmm. influences like, oh shit, Goku said that, Vegeta said that. Yeah. I, or they I, overcame I, this obstacle. Right? Right? Yeah, I recently, <laughs> I recently like as one it. of the <laughs> pop up songs I have. It's actually Vegeta yelling. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah. stuff that he says. I'm like, shit, man, this is really. Popular. I have a whole workout playlist where it's like Goku theme, Vegeta anthem. Oh, geez. Because yeah, yeah. apart from being like, it, it drew me into art. But it draws other people into fitness, into working out, mm. trying to look like these guys, right? Motivation. My hair, I got to cut a little shorter, but it's usually longer, more wavier. Mm. And I used to style it like trunks growing trunks, up. Trunks, yeah. Like yeah. parted in the middle, spiked. And <laughs> to this day, it's more like wavy, right? So yeah. like my hair was inspired by, by Dragon Ball Z. Um, just, it, and it connects people from different communities. Oh, it, yeah. it bridges ba- uh, barriers. There's, you know, it, 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 you don't have to speak the same language. You don't have to be from the same community. But you, when you see Goku, it's like, oh, that's Goku. Yeah, Whether you're you know. from Mexico, from Japan, from the Middle East, you know who Goku is. And or was, any of these yeah. characters, right? And it was always like that relatability of like having that kind of big brother vision. That, right? Not just that that too, but also just like that underdog. Like Goku yeah. got his ass kicked so many times. Oh, he, yeah. he he almost died to Vegeta. He almost died to Frieza. He had he had to over like it should, the anime, I think nowadays is more popular than it was when we were kids. Yeah. Simply because of social media and people kind of reflecting on they the nostalgia. Yeah. But it's also it shows like even like the newer stuff, like Demon Slayer, for example, it shows that a lot of the key themes are like perseverance, mm-hmm. motivation. You, you fall on your ass, you're going to get yourself back up. Yeah. You're going to overcome these obstacles because you have no choice yeah. but to overcome these obstacles, whether it's to go Super Saiyan or whether it's to save your village or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. So I think before it used to be like anime is for kids, but now it's like, I don't think it is for kids. No. If you watch the first episode of Demon Slayer, that's going to scar the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. like, if you're like a 10-year-old, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if you watch Attack on Titan, like that's yeah. disgusting. It's, yeah, yeah. It, but it's a great story, right? Yeah. So it's a, I think I mean anime the the way it shaped my life my work is it's in everything you see yeah whether it's like a simple hoodie like this inspired yeah. by like the Dragon Ball Z color palette yeah. or like the paintings I make or like the way I style my hair yeah it's just everywhere yeah right. I mean I mean for the woman that are in a relationship now you know now you have a reason why your boy <laughs> your your boyfriend's watching anime all the time now here you go like, growing up it was you probably know this uh, YouTube. Lincoln Park, Dragon Ball Z, yeah. and those animated music that videos were saying yeah, yeah. like they're they're playing numb, they're playing that. encore, they're playing <laughs> uh, what's it called uh, that Bon Jovi "It's My Life" song. Mm. It just gets you amped, right? It just gets oh, you yeah. whether it's to work out or to to to, to paint something, yeah, anything, right? Just Bro. even going on a drive, like it just makes me want to do it at the highest level. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think the last thing you want to kind of focus on with you, is, man, is yeah. uh, having a focus in when it comes to career. So what I mean by that is. I feel like a lot of people are just trying to grab every, you know, hat they can yeah. to try to succeed in life. You know, yeah. it, one of the things I told my uh, my friend was, he's like, oh, are you into crypto? I'm like, no. I don't care for it. Yeah. You can make a million, but I don't care for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, my crypto is what I'm doing in life. Whether mm. it's podcasts, whether it's my stories, whether it's my insurance company, that's my crypto. Yeah. Someone who's doing art, that's his crypto. Yeah. yeah. Someone who's in real estate, that's his crypto. You being a sports agency, that's your crypto. Yeah. 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 But now people are straying away from the, they want they want to grab everything. Mm. How do you help people? Like, how do you feel with help people navigate? Be like stick to your craft and yeah. it will give you more it's, in life compared to doing ten things at the same it's time. It's funny because I have a psychology background, like a sci- yeah. I'm a huge science geek, right? As a lot of my friends would know, like I wanted to become a doctor. I, I I've always been passionate about it. I also have a finance background. I worked as a personal banker, so a lot of people were like, "Oh, like they're completely unrelated to what you're doing." I'm like. In a sense, yes, but like there's also that similarity where it's like all it's all about the people, right? The people you work with. But I feel like if you're forcing the issue, then you need to kind of slow down, right? It's like I have a background in fine art, I have a background in finance, and I have a background in psychology, but I'm able to utilize all of that knowledge all at once. Yeah. How to how to budget, how to yeah. manage my finances, how mm-hmm. to grow my money, how to build my kids' futures, and how to understand why people like my work and why it connects to them the way it connects to them, right? Mm-hmm. But that just came naturally. Right the, through school, to jobs while I'm working at school. Yeah. Mm. So I, I didn't force this. I, I didn't make myself become an engineer. I didn't make myself become, you know, a uh, chef. Yeah. Right. It's, I can you still appreciate these things. Yeah. Yeah. But you shouldn't. Again, it comes down to the whole: don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. But if you have a few good eggs that go yeah. well together, yeah. that make a great omelet together, right? So you work with then it. you got to work with it, right? Yeah. Like I'm not gonna go right now and make myself become a pastry chef. <laughs> I can try it out. Yeah. I, I've, I've been making cupcakes, but I can, I, it's not gonna be, be my main thing. Yeah. Mm. It's not gonna be the thing I'm gonna try to make money off of. Yeah. It can be a passion or it can be a side hobby. Not a passion, like a side hobby, side right? Hobby, yeah. An interest. Yeah. But I feel like if you're just grasping at whatever straws you can get, there's a lack of direction. Yeah. And you need to, I, I tell like just younger people that talk to me, I'm like, you gotta t- just 
don't Always overthink it. Yeah. Just ask yourself, like, what's your gut telling you? What do you exactly. want to do? What do you like? Mm-hmm. So when people are like, oh, like, I don't know what to, what, what to do. I'm like, just tell yourself, what do you like? What do you actually find passion and joy in? Mm-hmm. Whether it's art, design, it can be something that you're trying to like ignore. Where it's like, no, maybe not this, maybe not this. But like, if that's the case, then go for it. Right? Yeah, I know. And this is one thing that I feel a lot of people be like, well, I have FOMO, man. Fuck your FOMO. Yeah, what's <laughs> for what? Man, you should only think you have your fear of missing out is your potential. Your life, man. Like, your yeah. life. And it's if you have multiple things that kind of click, yeah. then go I mean, for it. There's no time frame either, right? It's just exactly. because you have FOMO doesn't mean like, okay, I, I, I lost my time. I can't do it anymore. You have time, no. man. Like, no. So if you have 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, whatever it is in a day, it all stacks up and everything in that store. So, but but I also want to really tap into like, of course, we have a lot of women that follow our podcast as well. Yeah. Is And what I'm trying to more implement is the relationship side of things too, right? Yeah. Especially trying to hustle, trying to get to where you want to be and stuff. Of course, there's a long progress. Right? It's not a short thing, you know. Finances, it's your finances, <laughs> it's your times and stuff. So I'm cu- I'm curious to know, like, um, how did he know that the partner that you have, that your wife, was what had an understanding of like what the, what the path that you're trying to take is yeah. going to take sacrifices, is going to take I feel like, finances. I feel like because like our parents like knew each other from way back in the day too. Okay. Like, so we have similar upbringings in terms of like what our dads did and like the entrepreneurial side of things and like. We saw everything, but then we also saw nothing at the same time, and like mm-hmm. vice versa. Yeah. So I think it's it's more like she gets she gets it. Like she she gets the work that needs to, that needs to be put into because she's becoming a CPA. She knows that that's not going to come easy. Yeah. yeah, it's going to take years and time. Like she's almost done, but it's like even when she starts her career, it's like tax season, right? She's going to be gone for like 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. It's un- that understanding that hey, if I'm away for like whether I'm traveling for work or she's you know busy with her with her career mm. like do you do you have the household like do you do you got it like do you like you know is everything good to go right so with me like my biggest thing because we've been together now for like eight years mm. um it's just like she, she's seen it from day one she's seen like you know the, the good clients the bad clients the big ones the small ones and just like the work that i put into it so i think yeah. we kind of sh- we clicked early in the sense that we're we, we understand each other's journey yeah and like what we want out of life like she's very goal like goal oriented okay. yeah and, and I told you, and I told you before. I'm like, she's like, okay, what's what's happening next now? Like, okay, you you have a great project, you have a great opportunity. Don't get too full of yourself. How are you gonna one up yourself mm-hmm. now, right? It's constantly challenging. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like she always challenges me to just keep, you know, just keep pushing. Yeah. And, and I and I you know vice versa. I challenge her too. I'm like, if if I'm feeling lazy, she's like, you know, get into the studio. You gotta finish this painting. Don't let this client wait on you. It's not a good look, or yeah. it's, you know, you, you gotta get yeah. shit done, right? Because mm. sometimes, as we all know, like our passions can sometimes feel like a job, job too, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't want to paint today. I don't want to do this today. I don't want to. But if you have that person that kind of like reins you in, or sorry, reels you in, yeah, it's like that's all you need. Whether you have a million dollars to your name or a dollar, if you have that one person that's that has your back no matter what, yeah. Um, then, then you're set, man. That's yeah. the biggest accomplishment, dude. Yeah. Finding yeah. that right person. Yeah. And that's the one thing that uh, me and Mo could talk about all the time. I'm like, the thing is, like, when it comes to relationship, I think the main thing that, you know, we don't have a full understanding is um, being there for, like, challenging each other and building to- something together. Yeah. Hmm. Nowadays, I feel like uh, people don't have that ability to, you know, have an open end communication and understanding what their dreams and goals are. Yeah. And be like, okay, you need time for yourself to work yeah. on it. Yeah. I got you. I'm here in the background yeah, yeah, for yeah. you. People don't want to be in the backgrounds no more. People get like, be like, oh, you're not doing this for me. You're not doing that for me. And that's what it is. It's that emotional draining of a person. Yeah. And when you're trying to do something good, yeah. but they constantly pull you down and people stay in that toxic. And they don't realize you're not just hurting that person. You're hurting both of yourselves. Yeah. Like you're, you're hurting the whole relationship because it's that sense of that lack of patience. Yeah. Right. Like when things get tough, they quit. They give up. Yeah. If they see these reality mm. shows. Love is blind. Whatever. Oh, man. Like, oh, this is stupid. If I don't love you, if, if things don't work out for us longer than ten minutes, it's not meant to be. It's, it's not meant to be. It's like, it's all do you temporary. see what our parents went through? Like, <laughs> they would do oh. hell and war. They didn't even know each other before they, their wedding days, for the most yeah. part. Like, bro, bro. and they made it work for 30, 40 years. Yeah. Like, it's like so, I think you have to have that the person that you just connect with. It's just. You, you kind of just share the same mentality, right? Yeah. I agree. You're not the same person, but you share a similar mentality. Because a lot yeah. of the relationships nowadays are very temporary too, man. Oh, there's yeah. no, pa- like what you're saying, there's no patience. It's, it's all very... it's all seeking happiness in yeah. a temporary mo- mo- moment, right? It's like, yeah. where, where are the real talks? A lot of the talks now are short, man. Yeah, you yeah. have a real conversation. It's like, oh, you hurt my feelings. I need a 10-month exactly. 10 break from music. Mm-hmm. You have to have these hard conversations. You got to, you got to. And, and the thing is, like, as Mo kind of pointed out to is, a lot of the people are using relationship nowadays um to take the good out of a person that's presented to you oh yeah man i've seen it way too many whether it's women or men 
Mm. And people, you know, sad, sadly, they tend to stay in that environment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and when you try to, you know, take away joy for yourself out of a relationship, it destroys a whole, the person that's sitting across you. Oh, yeah. Mm. Like that person could be good, best person. And it, it would, for a moment, it will change your mentality, the way you look at like, like, man, like, <laughs> Fuck being a good guy. Yeah, yeah, fuck being the good guy, right? Yeah, yeah, and it goes true. back to that point you made where it's like, it just takes one person to have your back, to have yeah. you in your corner. Where it's like, if you find like your spouse, your significant other is just like not your rock, Yeah, it can completely destroy you. It can. It can, it can kill your will to continue working on whatever you're working, your passion can just be gone. So like, if you have that right person, man, like whether it takes you 20 years to get to where you need to be, if you have them, by, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, doesn't matter, yeah. it does not matter. Yeah. Yep. I still remember like, Sorry for cutting you no, off. No, 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 go, 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 man. Me and my wife always bring up bring up the story, like, because when we first got married, we were broke as fuck. No, no, yeah. not not first got married. Got first got engaged, 2016. You've become the mm. you so like, freaking shit out. Masala Walk, you probably know about that restaurant know, yeah. on 34. <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> so we had like fifteen dollars combined to our name. We're like, what the hell are we gonna? What buy? are we doing? It's date night. We gotta do something. <laughs> yeah. I have like half a tank of gas. <laughs> I pick up from her parents' house. Tell them that they're going to. She's going to the library with her friends, obviously. <laughs> like, hey, so we get like their hot and sour soup and like some stir fried rice and some chicken. We're like, all right, we got five bucks left. Let's get some dessert. <laughs> but like, it was a struggle. But like, we, when we look back on it now, like eight years later, we're like we had, that was such a fun day. Exactly. That's such a fun moment. Like yeah. you don't have, like, nowadays it's like rare. It's like, if you don't have a million dollars, if you don't have a freaking, you know, Q8, whatever, I don't want you. Perception yeah. is so skewed. Right? And what, a, what being with the person and going through it. Exactly. Yeah. That is so skewed. And you know? have to go through it, not just with yourself, but also with the person, person you're with. Exactly. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It builds, it, it builds you guys so much closer. We're not thinking shit. Well, that's the true you, beauty of it. Right? A lot of people are mistaken, right? It's just, I mean, for example, like, <laughs> I mean, I was supposed to have a day in Toronto. I was like, okay, well, let's do something nice. I'll, I'll take you on and everything. First thing she's, I mean, I'm her nose. First thing I tell her, <laughs> she's like, takes me, she's like, take me to this restaurant. It's like two, three hundred dollars. This guy goes to the menu, searches it. Uh, McDonald's like, value menu. Like, I'm like, bro, I'm like, I don't even know you. No it's price tag. I was saying, oh. puta. <laughs> it's a steakhouse. I was, like, this. I was like, yo, where's the humbleness, man? It's like, yeah. it's like, I mean, every, honestly, like every man that's trying to really, trying to be ambitious, trying to pursue his rounds values the simplest things in life yeah because for me it's like yo if you can't if you can't if you can't be humble if you can't enjoy the simple things in life how can you expect me to take you to these luxury things if you yeah that's the thing i was gonna say like because because i I guess i struggled with like who i married the words like she can be in sweats or Mm -hmm. she can be dressed up she doesn't give a shit she can have a louis vuitton bag or something from like anywhere she doesn't care yeah it's like if if it gets the job done if it makes me feel comfortable i do not care i'm like how do I get lucky, right? So yeah. like, sometimes you have to. It, it took. It didn't come right away. I, I, I what like the, like I, I've talked to like I tried Tinder, <laughs> like yeah, it yeah. didn't work. Yeah. I tried like my cousins, friends, or whatever. Yeah. Like it didn't, you know, like mm. you have it to doesn't connect. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't connect, right? Yeah. And some people you do connect with, but it just doesn't work out. And like yeah. when you okay. meet, when you yeah, meet, yeah it's, and when you meet the right person, it's just like you will know, right? You yeah. know, man. Yeah, they, yeah. they cherish your time just because you're you. Because yeah, when they cherish that time with you, yeah. Yeah. no matter where it is, like, you know, it's so funny, like we talk about, it's the small things. Because if a person sitting across from you, be like, listen, I don't need the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you show, you can showcase how much you care for me by doing oh, the yeah. smallest thing. Yeah. It could be like a small little surprise yeah. that yeah. could be worth $10. It yeah. will have the biggest impact on yeah. the oh, person. Yeah. Or like just have my back. Exactly. Yeah, be, yeah. be my support system, support right? System. Yeah. So, I mean, moral of the story. The more you fuck around, the more you will find. <laughs> the moral of the story is love is not blind. <laughs> love, is not blind. <laughs> love is not blind. There you go. So, That's me the title of the video. Screw you, Nick Lachey. <laughs> yeah, but no, man, thank you, Garamal, for coming out the second Appreciate time. Appreciate it, but, man. I know it's uh, we were hassling you. I feel like this one. I feel like this one is better. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Because yeah, yeah. like we, we got into different range yeah. of topics Ranges, before yeah. we were coming in. Like, hey, what's your story, bro? It's, go read my podcast. It's already on there. Yeah, yeah, my story's yeah, been yeah. out there. Yeah. So yeah. it was a different podcast. This is so. more expected this part. More casual. Yeah, yeah, more yeah, like an actual more casual. Casual. boy talking. Yeah. Everybody can relate to it. Yeah. So now nah, I appreciate yeah. the time, brother. Yeah, I appreciate. Uh, it. Thank you. Genuinely, and then yeah, man. Hopefully, y'all appreciate our time. And anything you have any projects yeah. or anything you want to know about um i'll be in dallas in april uh, i can't tell you much you just have to follow me on instagram hey, at I'll stay follow studios <laughs> i'm not going to spill it up for you so <laughs> <laughs> it'll be in the caption somewhere yeah. but yeah. a few yeah, a lot of exciting things this summer uh i like to keep things like close to the chest until yeah. it's done but yeah, just, the art nights as well, right? The yeah. paint night, oh, paint bro. Night, sorry. Paint the night. last paint night was February. I've been, I've been having people hound me because it's, yeah. it's usually yeah, like once crazy. a month. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing in March. I was too busy. April, probably not. So <laughs> May 
third. I'm announcing it right now. May, May third. You heard it there first. You go. Well, when is this gonna get long? Uh, Don't worry. We'll, we'll throw this snippet right. in. Oh, <laughs> May, May third, paint night. Uh, it's gonna be Star Wars theme because May the fourth hey. is the next oh, day. Oh, May the fourth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. May the fourth. May the fourth. May the fourth. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Star Wars paint night. I'll post about it, and we're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect, man. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Peace until next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.